This is Five on Your Side at 6, focused on you. Tonight, a woman is dead and a police officer is on administrative leave after a deadly domestic dispute in North St. Louis. Thank you for joining us. I'm Ann Allred. Mike Bush has the night off. This all began shortly after 10 this morning on West Florissant and Arlington. Our Justina Cornell was at the scene and is live at police headquarters. Justina. Well, we were there when families started to arrive and they were yelling and screaming when they learned the news. Some said it was their mom involved in this. So, of course, a very emotional and intense situation earlier today. Now, this all started shortly after 10 this morning when a woman in her 50s called police saying she was upset after fighting with her boyfriend. Police said both the man and the woman had guns. Now, during that fight, police say the boyfriend tried to disarm her, but she ended up taking his gun. That's when the man drove away and police say she fired two shots. Officers arrived to the scene, found the woman outside, and she was still armed. Police say an officer told the woman to put the gun down when she quickly raised her gun and the officer fired one shot at her. Police say this happened almost at the same time the woman shot herself. Lieutenant Colonel Michael Sack on the scene shared a reminder about domestic violence resources. Our domestic abuse unit as well as our officers when we respond to domestic uh, abuse scenes, always provide information about services that are available. Um, so I'd encourage you to, to, to push that out with a story. Uh, you can reach to our website. We've got a lot of information on there for domestic abuse. Per protocol, the officer involved in this case is on administrative leave and the boyfriend is also cooperating with police. Reporting in downtown St. Louis, Justina Cornell, five on your side. A man convicted of killing a St. Louis police officer was sentenced today to life in prison without parole. Thomas Kinworthy shot and killed Officer Tamaris Bohannon following a home invasion in Tower Grove South nearly four years ago. Bohannon was just 29 years old. He left behind his wife and three young children. Kinworthy yelled at prosecutors while addressing the court and did not accept responsibility. It just goes to truly show again he has no remorse for what he done. His whole defense was a lie, and not once did he say, I'm sorry. I want everyone to remember my son by his bravery, his dedication, for his honor of wanting to serve this city, to wear that uniform, to protect those who are helpless, before the sentencing, Bohannon's family members read victim impact statements in the court. They said it was both difficult and empowering. Tonight, a teenager is under arrest accused of assaulting and robbing a woman inside a St. Louis treasure, Forest Park. Police say it happened in the Visitor Center parking lot on Grand Drive Saturday night. Five on your side's Megan Kernan joins us in studio after speaking to a man who helped the victim just moments after that attack. And the victim is a 74 year old woman. Now listen to this. She was simply walking back to her car with her son when police say a teenager approached her, pushed her to the ground and then took off in her car. Several people in the park quickly helped the woman in need. I've never heard someone scream like that before. It was very scary. It was Saturday night around 930 when Samir Mudraj and his wife noticed a man on a bike lurking around the visitor center parking lot in Forest Park. She told me that she knew that he wanted to do something like that he was a criminal and he was about to do something. Seconds later, they say the teen did the unimaginable to a 74 year old woman right next to her son who was disabled. I heard like a really, really loud scream like from a horror movie. We drove over and like I saw his bike and the, in the middle of the street. Samir says the woman flagged them down for help. Like she came over crying. Um, she said that like the guy like threw her on the ground, um, took her car keys, her phone and um, stole her car and like she was bleeding from her arm. Police say the teen pushed the woman into a parked car and down to the ground, forcefully removing the keys from her hand and drove off in her car. Samir says he immediately called 911. It was sad like that someone can just go like after an elderly woman, you know, with a disabled son. It was just very uh, brazen of him. This happened while the woman and her son were on a walk near the Muni. Kofi Coleman, president and CEO of the Muni, says his team then brought the woman to their lobby until police came. We have a lot of police and security here, so they went over to see if they could assist. She wasn't a Muni patron, but she was outside trying to deal with it. We're happy she's okay. 
Less than two hours after the attack, St. Louis County Police tracked down the woman's car near Jennings Station Road and West Florissant. Police arrested a 16-year-old boy. The woman, who had a birthday since the attack and is now 75, had her car returned to her. Torrential rainfall led to catastrophic flooding <clears throat> Excuse me, in Nebraska, Iowa, South Dakota, and Minnesota this week. Surging waters are to blame for a dam failure along the Blue Earth River in Minnesota. And now all that water is heading our way. Five Hundred Sides meteorologist Tracy Henson has more. Tracy. Alrighty, and so uh, right now I am along the Mississippi Riverfront and we are not expecting a tsunami style wall of water to come downstream. That's just not how rivers work, but we are expecting some minor to moderate flooding. We're going to see that water. I wish we wouldn't, but at least it won't be all at once like what happened upriver. When it first falls, like you say, all at once, uh, it creates flash flooding. And as we saw across parts of northwest Iowa, southern Minnesota, record flooding. And all of that water is flowing into two river basins, the Missouri and the Mississippi, which is almost exciting for St. Louis National Weather Service senior hydrologist Mark Fuchs. Those two converge just north of St. Louis. So you get all excited and like, wow, we're going to get a flood here. Well, not so much. <laughs> not so much, but still some. We're going to see flooding on the Mississippi in all likelihood. It'll be minor to maybe even moderate when it's all said and done with. All said and done with because there is more rain in the forecast. We got more rain in the forecast and that's going to add to initial predictions of what the crest could be. So we've covered the Mississippi. How about the Missouri? It's been looking very full. It is up. I, I noticed it myself because we've been used to looking at that river, Missouri in particular, going across it every day and seeing, you know, these large islands of sand or whatnot, um, they're gone. Barring any crazy rainfall, Fuchs says the Missouri is fine. We're not expecting any flooding on the Missouri, at least not yet. There could be perhaps some minor flooding that develops, but that would be the worst of it. Now for both the Missouri and the Mississippi River, torrential rainfall could change those river forecasts. And we do have some severe storms with heavy rain potential in the forecast. Along the Mississippi and the St. Louis waterfront, I'm Tracy Henson, five on your side. Scott will talk about that potential rain, but first, have you ever seen this before? Looks like rainbow clouds. We received dozens of pictures today from Hawk Point, Wentzville, Darden Prairie, Valley Park, Manchester, and Baldwin. So, Scott, what causes this? Well, yeah, it's actually pretty cool. We had a lot of pictures come in, and it was a cool cloud. And it's somewhat uncommon because you just have to have the exact right type of cloud, and it has to have the exact right type of either cloud droplets or ice crystals, all very similar and all very thin. It can't be a thick cloud. This was from Rachel in O'Fallon, Missouri. What a beautiful shot there. So what is this like? Well, it's called cloud iridescence. OK, or an iridescent cloud. Basically, think of prism going back to your science class. You're taking the white light from the sun and you're putting that through the prism and then you're diffracting it and separating that white light into all its different colors from red to violet. Remember Roy G. Biv? Mm -hmm. Red, orange, yellow, blue, green, blue, indigo, violet. There you go. That's what it is. So unusual to see it to some degree because you just have to have the exact right conditions. We'll talk about the rain chances for tomorrow night into the weekend in a few minutes. Ann. Coming up, new statues installed along Cherokee Street, the inspiration behind this artwork. Plus, that sinkhole that swallowed an Alton soccer field is more common than you might think. 